Hello, everyone. Now, if you or your child are interested in the exploration of the universe, the discoveries that are made, and the telescopes that are used to make them, then you are so lucky that you live here because we have access to one of the largest collections of research telescopes in the world, and major advances happen right here in our own backyard. Bill Buckingham is here to tell us all about the programs that we could take advantage of out at Kitt Peak National Observatory. Bill, thank you so much for coming in. It is, we're so lucky to have uh, this, when I'm saying right in our own backyard, it's really in our own backyard. Just I think a lot of people don't know what we can take advantage of and what we can't take advantage of. Uh, before we get to the wonderful programs and some of the things that you've uh, brought here, can I even just ask what an observatory is and what you guys do there? Sure, uh, people ask that question all yeah. the time. In our case, an astronomical observatory is a place where we have special instruments, in this case, telescopes that can see light, radio waves, infrared, ultraviolet lights um, to study the cosmos. Now, I think even when I first moved to Tucson, that was one of the first things I learned is that we have a, a large amount of telescopes that are nearby, but I don't really know a lot of people know why they're here. Well, uh, a lot of telescopes exist not only on Kitt Peak, but some other mountaintops in the Tucson area because we, we have all the, the wonderful ingredients that makes ground-based astronomy so profitable, uh, so, so uh, able to be done here in Tucson. We have more than 300 clear nights a year. We have fairly clear skies. We have relatively well-controlled outdoor lighting that allows us to see the night sky um, we're not washed out by uh, bright street lights or commercial lighting, et cetera. So we can see the sky, uh, Mother Nature cooperates. We have nice mountaintops that are accessible by highway uh, that gets us up above dust and clouds and moisture and such. So all the ingredients needed to study the universe. Now, and you, a lot of what you just mentioned, you said the word night a lot in, in a lot of that. And I think that when I said some people don't know what's available to us, is there's also things to be seen during the daytime. Absolutely. <laughs> Matter of fact, Kip Peak has the world's largest solar telescope. So during the day, it observes the sun. At night, it's also capable of observing some celestial objects as well. And that's when the uh, plethora of other telescopes really go into action once the sun goes down. But I'm sure the stargazing uh, portion at night is also very popular. And you actually have several programs that cover that. That's right. We have uh, four different uh, nighttime options for individuals, families, groups, school groups, youth groups, scout groups, et cetera, uh, varying in uh, intensity and number of hours, uh, depending on your interest level. And one of the things that really makes it unusual to have a major federal scientific laboratory to have uh, nighttime activity going on uh, surrounding these enormous light buckets. That's really uncommon to allow the public in and among sensitive research telescopes like that. Wow, and so I'm sure you get this question also a lot, which is how far really can I see with what, you know, if you put it in kind of layman's terms for me to understand. Sure, uh, the human eye has uh, amazing abilities to see things at night. Without any telescope at all, there's an object in the sky, it's a neighboring galaxy that you can see in the fall and winter sky called the Andromeda Galaxy. When you go outside, if you know exactly where to look in the night sky for that, you're looking back in time 2,400,000 years. Now, as far as miles go, if you multiply six trillion with a T times 2.4 million, that incredible number with lots and lots yeah. of zeros and commas is how many miles away. Wow. So with our telescopes, uh, during our public programs, we can show you things 50 times that distance. Oh my gosh. Modest sized telescopes. So you get to look back in time at light that's been traveling across the universe since the day that dinosaurs still existed on Earth. Wow, mind blown. Yes. <laughs> it's so, it's, you know, uh, amazing things that we can come and see. And you've actually brought a couple of things here with you today. What is it that you brought? Just a representative sampling of some objects that we uh, sometimes show through a telescope. The object I was referring to, mm -hmm. the Andromeda Galaxy oh, right here. This. Right, so 2,400,000 2, uh, light years away, or many, many trillions of miles, 
This is a recently made globe of the planet Pluto, made famous just two summers ago when NASA's uh, Her New Horizons spacecraft passed by it. Mars will be featuring late spring and summer. Mars will be coming into an exquisitely great opportunity for close-up viewing through uh, the visitor center telescopes. This is the Rosette Nebula is one uh, star forming region that we sometimes show through telescopes. So we have an array of things uh, both in our celestial backyard and a good bit further away that we can show you at night. Well, I love that we're talking about all the different things that people can uh, come out and see and take advantage of. And I'm going to remind them how they can get a hold of you guys to make uh, reservations and, of course, ask when everything is available. Uh, but Bill, thank you so much for uh, coming in. I, you know, we know that Kit Peak is there and everything, but we really have learned a lot today. Very good. Thank you so much. Now, you at home, you can experience incredible science, telescopes, and stars at Kitt Peak National Observatory. To learn more and plan your visit, visit the website on your screen or give them a call at 318-8627. And you can also enroll in the Nightly Observing Program or the Dark Sky Discovery Program that offers outstanding views of the Arizona night sky.